Hey guys and welcome to this video. Today we're gonna talk about 3D topology optimization and we will make use of our scripting capabilities which you saw in the last video. If not, make sure you check that out because it speeds up the modeling process by quite a bit. Now, um, we have as an example the cantilever beam and I modeled um, the phases up here. So we have um, data phase which is um, all the components, properties, materials. Those are all done by the script, so we don't have to worry about any of those. Then geometry and mesh we still have to do because that's specific. Analyze load and boundary conditions we still have to do where the analyze is complete, completely set up um, because um, we have the load step, we have the load collectors, but not the loads and boundary conditions. And design variables, responses, design constraints, and objectives are just set up by the script so no worry about these as well but i have to tell you going back to the script um i had missed uh, the topology optimization thus far which is now part of the script don't worry if you downloaded it from the description it's there and also the opti controls so opti controls which you can set up in hyperworks right here let me just quickly show that optimization opti controls I changed um, that we have 100 uh, iterations max and also the discrete value to one that you get a more discrete um, topology optimization result. All right, without further ado, um, I will just go back and create a new model and now copy all those commands into Hyperworks and to the TCL console, paste it here and you can see all the entities getting created. Now we don't need a non-design component here and also uh, we don't need a non-design property for that reason. But see that we don't have a current component here. And if I'm now beginning to model the geometry, a new component will get created automatically. I don't want that. So I make this component current. Now all the elements, all the geometry, all the mesh is put into this component um, unless specified otherwise. All right, um, so going back to our example, we have the second phase here, the geometry and the mesh. For that reason, we need a 3D box. And you can see that from the coordinate system, I want X to be in this direction. And this point is really here. And Y is here and Z is going upwards. And we also make sure that we have a split here that we can use this middle knot, uh, middle node. Um, yeah, so those are the points which we have to make sure we are getting at for um, the geometry phase. So first of all, I'm creating a point at zero, zero, zero. That's the first thing. Middle mouse, no, right mouse button and checking here this check sign and you see the color, it's matching, that's good. And now we going, we are going to orientate it like that. That we have y to the right and z to the to uh, to the top. So x is looking out of the plane, and um, now we can um, draw this this rectangle and and make this box. So I go to solids and then box, and then um, just snapping on here, dragging around here, and now I'm just holding down the middle mouse button to slightly turn it and you see that it's extruded uh, the amount doesn't matter this much i just simply left click here and set it to be 900 300 300 and now i'm pressing the middle mouse button to complete the action so you can see it's aligned to the coordinate system you can see by checking the reference through here also making the orientation maybe to that one. You see that's perfectly fine. And now we're going to split um, this solid. And here you have to be really careful because split can, can both operate on surfaces and solids. And so the target has to be, and not even lines. So the target has to be um, selected priorly. So solids, check the solids and then the plane. Now you see that snapping to the midpoint, which is good. Clicking here once. Now you can see the, the plane, which is perfectly fine. 
And now I'm pressing again the middle mouse button to complete the action. That's the first thing. You, you can see this yellow plane. If you don't see the yellow plane, you did something wrong. Next thing, both solids. The plane is right here. And middle mouse button, and you see it like that. So we have split the solid into four solids. And make sure you have selected the solids before. If you did not, um, it was on surfaces and you're just splitting the surfaces. And then you won't see this yellow thing here in the middle, this, this inner boundary. And for that reason, uh, the meshing will uh, fail in the next step. So make sure you have it just right like this. Now for the meshing. Um, meshing is done here, mesh and then hex. And then you can press all unmeshed, which selects all the solids which has which have no mesh. And we can change here the size. For example, 23 millimeters will not match here because it's 300 millimeters long. And so we would not get a point here because of the splitting we do. And so it's perfectly fine to give in here any values you want. Um, yeah, let's make 25 for that matter. Click on mesh. And you see that you have the elements, the 2D elements, which are then dragged for the solid map mesh. Um, just hit mesh once again, and you see that you have um, your, your components meshed. So we have a mesh, we have the geometry, we can now check that we have this phase 2 complete. Next up is the analysis phase. And the analysis phase done with the analyze ribbon and now just to orientate it we want to fix this one and want to pose a force of three kilonewtons onto that node now um, we see that we have here two load collectors the first is loads so we just create a load here load and select the node and i think i'm lucky in this case, magnitude minus 3000 and the vector is set axis. That's exactly what I want to do. So it's pushing downwards. Here. Create it. And now you can see it here. There's, this is the, the arrow for the force. And if you just hide the, the element and the geometry, you can see the colors matching to this color. All right. Second phase or a uh, second, second boundary condition in this case is fixing all the nodes here. I'm returning here and go to boundary conditions and constraints. And here I can select the surfaces. Make sure, because now you cannot see it really that it's selected, but if you hide the elements, you can see. And surfaces is one way. You could also just constrain the nodes directly. Then you would have to select all the nodes. There's one really quick way to do that is by selecting one one of the nodes here and then hitting the yellow nodes button and selecting by face. Then you see all the nodes are selected in here. But I tend to use the surfaces more. Mm, so I'm setting selector heat to surfaces and then just selecting all the surfaces and click on create. Ah, stop. Because now it's the load collector loads is current. If I do it like that, I can just quickly show it. See the color? It's in that load collector. I don't want that. So um, control C for uh, control set for, for returning and selecting all the surfaces again. Make sure. Yeah. Those four are selected and make the SPC load collector current. Then I have to select it again because it clears all the marks. Um, but so you see that here the, the loads, or in this case, the boundary conditions constraints are set into the right um, load collector. All right, then I can check off SPCs and boundary conditions of my list. And I think that's about it for the topology optimization. What do we need to check? Maybe the volume frac constraint, which is here. So 0 0.1 seems fine. Um, maybe I'll, I do a little bit less, 0 0.05, which is basically, I think, the minimum for this case. Um, and I will just run it. So we'll save it as a model. In this case, can deliver beam 3D. No. 
3D optimization, 3D opt, and it's a volume track of 005. And I can just run it here with the analysis button. And optimization is correct. I set a, a memory, an upper bound of the memory of uh, 12 gigs of RAM. And the options here that we have um, in, in total 12 cores which are running for this optimization. So hit run. And now you can see that the surfaces constraints are mapped to the mesh. You can see not the mesh here, right? But um, it's there. And yeah, so this is done now for um, the optimization. And I will just quickly show you the, um, the control card parameters. Uh, no, not the control cards, the optimization control, which I changed here. So the desk max I turned up to 100 and the discrete is turned to 1. So the discrete 1 means that the penalty ex exponent is set to 2, which is basically the recommended settings for um, P solid elements or solid elements. So that's what I, I changed in the script. I can quickly show that to you here as well. So those are the opti controls. If you want to change something in here, you have to change it manually. Go to your command TCL and uh, replace the values in here. All right. Um, yeah. Now let's check on our optimization. It converged after 38 optimization iterations. And you can see the compliance went down, 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 down. That's perfectly fine. And uh, also here, optimization has converged. Visible design, all constraints satisfied. So clicking on results, I'm I'm a bit excited what the result's going to be. But I think it's um, a rather coarse mesh for the sake of demonstration. So if we want to have a finer design, we had to mesh it with uh, a smaller element size. But I will, I think we will see the, the structure. So going to the last iteration, showing the contours. Yeah, you cannot really sh see much. Um, checking the ISO value and setting it to here. And now you can see what the structure may look like. Maybe turning off the averaging method and you can see where the structures are. You can see it that it is like a X uh, cross a section uh, shape um, in here. You have some checkerboard effect, which you can get rid of with the um, aforementioned values or methods of, for example, uh, posing a minimum member size or maximum member size in here, as well as, for example, increasing all the, um, the discrete um, as parameter, or there are a bunch of different options you could choose from. But um, yeah. Here, don't get confused. Those is uh, this is hyper view. There, the view controls work a little bit different. So you have to hit control all the time, and right click is panning, and left click is rotating. So maybe if you're pre pressing the middle mouse button and wonder why nothing changes, that's because of the view options. Yeah, um, I think there's also the possibility to get a contour here. So if we go to post, we can get contour and then element density and then on contour yeah contour and then we can see um yeah we have to change the iterations yeah so for example yeah it's 48 so let's get to the last iteration and contour so we have it here and also i think the iso surface should work here So here you can see ISO surfaces. That's rather interesting. Um, so there are different um, surfaces of, um, of, of of the same values are. But I have to look more into it and maybe I uh, can show you in a later version um, what's that all about. For the, for the reason, uh, for, 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 uh, for the meantime, just stick with the hyperview. And you can do the, the contour and ISO as well here. So if there's anything uh, you want to comment on, if there's questions left, please uh, leave a comment down below and I will be happy to get back to you soon. Thanks for watching and goodbye.